I do want to see that movie, though. Not me. I hate time travel movies. They never make any sense. Welcome back to Shit You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, a weekly podcast where movie enthusiasts, ex-movie theater projectionists, new and old friends, take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question, should or shouldn't you watch this? I want to extend a warm welcome. You know him and love him. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Sack Lunch himself. Yeah, buddy. I'm in it. I'm all over it. I'm all about it. I appreciate you uh, humoring me in the holiday season to watch a horror slash comedy of Totally Killer. I don't think there's ever a wrong time for this type of movie. Really? Are you down for yeah, no. like horror movies or horror comedies any time of the year? Yeah, I think as long as there's a comedy element, I, I think that it plays year round. That's where I can handle comedy or i mean horror is where when there's comedy it's just better Agreed. Okay. all right let's here here's a little clip and i'm playing this because i think it's so funny to me and uh here you go pam miller uh yeah take a picture it'll last longer <laughs> uh sorry you're just I was expecting. Uh, I'm Jamie from Canada. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not going to shake your hand because I'm not 45 and a man. Come over after school and you can set up for the party while I do my hair. Okay. You know, where I'm from, birthday parties are considered so lame. Like, I don't know, maybe you should cancel it. Maybe you should fuck off and die. <laughs> Jesus, Mom. <laughs> Masita. Ay, 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 mamacita. Oh, hablas español? Está bien. Vete a la mire, more. <laughs> Three years of Spanish, bitch. <laughs> I'd like to report a crime. I just like that that scene. It's so great, dude. It's really in your face and like kind of sets the tone for for what's to come. Yeah, and I love you know those. Obviously, we're just listening to it, but the swooshing sounds, she's seeing the older versions of these people as she's seeing them for the first time, which is cool. And then her reactions are like, man, these guys are not like what I know them to be, (laughs) which is, I feel like that's, if I got to see my dad, like when he was like 21, I think it would be weird. Oh my God, dude, I I will never want my daughter to (laughs) see. He had 21, bro. Oh, my God, no. That would be the worst. And I feel like... she'll be able to use it for any situation. I'm like, you did it. You learned from it. You did it. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. Yes. It's not... And that's why I think that scene is so great. They they did such a good job of putting all that emotion into one, like, one-minute scene. It It was pretty cool. It was good. All right, let's jump into popcorn trivia. Let me tell you something, Pandeo. All right, I got some good trivia. There's not a lot about this because it's it's a brand new movie, but Jamie, Pam, and Blake have the last name Hughes. This is a nod toward director John Hughes, who directed The Breakfast Club, which starred Molly Ringwald, Pam's favorite actress. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. Another nod to the 80s, Jamie, the lead character, is named after Jamie Lee Curtis, who was a scream queen and from Halloween and everything. So, Do you think that it was also kind of a nod to the Heathers? Because they called them the Mollies. Oh, for sure. You have that m- movie with the, yeah, the Heather. Yeah, it says the self-proclaimed Mollies only call themselves that because they all dressed like Molly Ringwald's iconic characters from her plethora of John Hughes films like the Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, and Sixteen Candles. Let's see. Costume designer Patty Henderson said in an interview with Salon that the look was always based on Sloane Peterson, Mia Sarah, from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And they nailed it. It's, it looks great. Last trivia is the killer wears a mask. I, I, this, this is interesting to me. As a creative person, and I 
design stuff. This is fascinating to me that, you know, obviously there had to be some kind of talk about the mask and what they were going to do because it's such a big part of the movie. But the face of a grinning blonde haired man designed by makeup wizard Tony Gardner, director Natachka Khan, Natachka Khan, (laughs) Shaka Khan, explains that the mask had to originate in the 80s. So you have to have that nostalgic vibe. But in our movie, people still dress up like the killer in present day. So I wanted it to feel a little bit relevant. We landed on the idea of a handsome man being terrifying. Tony Gardner and our design team started pulling 80s heartthrob references like Kiefer Sutherland and Rob Lowe and Dolph Lundgren. I didn't know Dolph Lundgren was a heartthrob. Heartthrob. Like, no way. (laughs) And even Johnny Bravo, which I can see that instantly. And then exaggerated it. Yeah, Johnny Bravo is like a... Johnny Bravo? It's like a cartoon network uh cartoon oh, with the black shirt yeah yeah and the the hair and and you know the yeah, sunglasses the and everything and, yeah 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 it's it. yeah it was a great reference and then they exaggerated it and made the teeth oversized the idea was that the last thing you see is this beautiful smile as you're being killed it was a good mask yeah it's hard because you've got so many iconic masks from horror movies you've got to come up with your own thing and i think they did a pretty good job yeah, I don't like. I don't think you're gonna put it on the Mount Rushmore, but no. I think it was it was properly done for sure. It could have been. It could have killed the movie, though, dude. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. This is so punnable, though, man. I know. I, you just it's, you just have to you just have to roll with it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get into get your beefs ready and your puzzles ready and your redemption. Okay. Ready. Because we're going right yeah. in. Where's the beef? Hey, where's the beef? I've got, these are not laced with trivia. These are my pure grass-fed beef beefs. Okay? And think of yours. So my so my first one, and this is a top-level beef, not just for this film, but for all time. I hate when people, and I it's just starting, I started to hear it even more after watching this movie, but I hate it when someone says, I love that for you. Okay. I love that for you, Dan. I love that for you. Okay. So what you're saying is I'm an idiot and only you like it for me, but you hate it for yourself. Okay, cool. Thanks. Don't ever say that to me again. (laughs) Because you're you're too good for it. Right. Yeah. They got it. Yeah. Ugh. I just want to punch him in the throat bro oh yeah if somebody says that to me uh, i it will be nails on a chalkboard now like somebody might have said it to me in the last week i don't know but i will now oh yeah yeah oh i love that for you okay and then i'm not a big fan of stabs it's a like a thing like you know how people have fear of like heights and stuff i the stab is so visceral and it it's like worse than like you know, getting your getting some someone blown up or like a head blown off or like even super gore like stabs. Oh man, it's 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 tough. And for me, the beef was it's sweet sixteen. So there's sixteen stabs every time. Yeah. So I if know you're not a stab fan. It's oh, tough. Man, like I knew. Okay, here comes a stab. So he gets two or three in, and I'm like, oh well, we we're gonna have a lot more. It's like a lot more coming. I didn't like that. Here's another beef. The time machine is really weird, bro. Like, couldn't they what, come up with... Way? It's just a, a photo booth. Can we come up with something cooler? Something different? I don't know. I just didn't like it. I thought it was the worst part of the movie. Huh. And also, it looked like there was so much science behind it, you know? I don't know. I know that you got to have that, but it just was weird. I didn't. I didn't like it. Okay. Also, related to the time machine, get to the 80s sooner. Just get me there faster. Yeah. I looked at my watch. We're 19 minutes into the movie, and we're, we're to the Boy, 80s. you just nailed it. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's a long time, 19 minutes for a setup of a movie, but I think you could have done it in like 15, 10, 10 minutes. Just give me to the 10-minute mark. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I was sitting here thinking like, man, like maybe they didn't need to have that many murders and I could have seen more 80s. 
Yeah. Like that's what I was thinking. But what you just said was far more accurate of why I was feeling I needed more eighties because Mm -hmm. they stole it on the front end of the film. You're absolutely right. Yeah. They just needed to get, get there sooner. And I was just waiting because I knew I, I mean, I watched the trailer. I knew what was going to happen. Like, just get me there faster. A hundred percent. And then my biggest beef, my last one is that the podcast guy is the killer. It's Chris. Really? Chris, I'm Chris and I'm a podcast guy and that, and that's a killer. (laughs) I put the heck like, but, but would you still have a problem with it if his name wasn't Chris? Yes. I mean, that really tipped the scales like way high for me, but like, really, it's this weird, douchey, like nerdy, bald, old, dumb dude. Awkward. Awkward. Yeah. Glasses. I mean, I have glasses and I'm bald, but I mean, I'm describing myself, but listen, I don't, I, no, that's not the killer. It was cool that I didn't guess that he was the killer, but at the same time, uh, I I didn't like that. Well, I I didn't love the double reveal either, that there was two different killers. I didn't mind that. I didn't mind that. I didn't like it. Yeah. I think that was one of my beef is I didn't, I didn't need that extra layer of, Hey, this is time travel because yeah, I just didn't need it. Yeah. I can see that. It it was a twist. We were like, Oh really? I got, there's more. Yeah. And then it was just like kind of, pretty short-lived right didn't yeah. it feel short-lived to you like you, you came in and then got kind what, of the real killer out yeah he just done he was out yeah like just all of it just all the reveals i think could have could have been better and also the second killer like i, I felt that was like in bad taste like really the the nerdy black guy he was so cool like i why is he the other killer you know he seems so well, nice. And then, yeah, and then the way that they were trying to throw the scent off, like they didn't really develop that character much of the the awkward kid mm-hmm. that drove the van. I, that, that just felt forced. So that was a little tough on me. I would say, my are your beefs done? Yeah, I'm done. My biggest beef was I just needed a little more 80s and less bloodiness and swearing yeah like hot tub time machine we mentioned it before that really slammed you with 80s like all the the whole time and it was great oh it was so great dude i mean like just all the odes and i just think when it comes to 80s you don't like you have so much that you don't have a ton of risk to go for it like it there's nothing but upside with mm-hmm. the eighties because of how incredible it was. Mm-hmm. And so like, like it, it seemed like these characters were far more obsessed with sex than living in the eighties and, and the culture that was eighties because the, the culture in the eighties wasn't that, you know what I yeah. mean? It was arcade, games, arcades, arcades, yeah, arcades. like pizza joints, soda, like yeah, go, getting on your bikes and riding somewhere and like going to the gas station. And like, there's so many th- fun things about the eighties that, you know, playing, you know, tech mobile on, <laughs> on Nintendo. Yeah, and, like, it was just the eighties was all about being seen by everybody else. Yeah. And they were all small communities, small ish communities. Sure. And so like, it was all about just being seen, not necessarily party sex. It was, it was the social aspect of yeah. the, the party, but it was from being seen, not from the party aspect of it. So I, I just, I think they, they missed the mark just a little on the eighties. Yeah, that's my, even my last piece. and there could have been more like high school stuff. I mean, there was a lot, but there could have been there could have been more vignettes, more little little funny 100%. bits in the high in actual school, like in class, like with weird looking teachers. You know, I had some interesting teachers. You know, so did I. And yeah, like bro. that could have been funny. You know, so anyway, I think they they shouldn't have played it so safe. I think they should have went for it. 
Yeah, I think you're right. They use the sex, the uh, swearing for like, like shock. That was lazy. Exactly. All right, let's get into puzzles. A sphincter says what? What? A sphincter says what? What? Exactly. <laughs> All right. This is a WTF for me. When Norm Dubasage gets deaded. <laughs> That yeah. was so crazy, dude. I was not expecting that. Right in his freaking head, dude. Yeah. Wow. And it was like, did you hear somebody say, just keep rolling? <laughs> <Run."> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's like, that surprised me so much. And it was so visceral. That caught me completely off guard. Yeah. Wow. That, that was insane. What the F yeah. on that one. All right. Here's a here's just a question. Here's a puzzle. Can yep. you can you have too many BJ's? No. No. We solved that puzzle. All right. Absolutely not. Next one. Um it's but then he said he hopes for one more, but then she didn't know what that was. I kind of don't understand. She didn't she wanted more he wanted more BJ's and then she didn't know I don't I don't know. I didn't I didn't there was a lot of BJ talk and, and a lot of weird BJ talk. Yeah, it, I just like I said that that part was just too forced. Yes, so that I don't understand it either. I'm puzzled. Also, here's a puzzle: How did people sleep on water beds, bro? Did you have a water bed? Man, my parents did, and I never felt like it was comfortable. Like getting out of it was so hard. <laughs> That was a thing. People slept on water. It was an ab workout. Yeah, it was an ab workout. But let me ask you this. Why don't those exist anymore? I don't know. I just feel like I would be constantly moving. Like I'd just be like moving all the time. Didn't it make, I'm not going to lie, it made me want to sleep just maybe one or two nights on a legit water bed. I mean, I wanted to try it for sure. I've I've gotten in one. I've I've laid on it and I, and it was like novelty. Right. But like I wanted to experience a night on water. <laughs> Such a weird I gotta thing. I got to be honest. Like, like we might have a new business venture because there's no reason that people can't sleep on water. My friend. I mean, yeah. And if someone temperature controlled. Yeah. And, and if there's none out there, and there's not a lot of people. There's not people clamoring for waterbeds, but there's there's some. Right, there will be now. People will want them. For sure. This is our idea. Don't steal it, anyone who's listening. We're yeah, trademark. Bring, <laughs> we're bringing back waterbeds. <laughs> All right, my last puzzle, and I brought this up already because of my aversion to stabs, but why couldn't it have been the sweet 13 or the sweet 10 killer or the sweet 5 killer or the sweet two killer like why 16 it's too many steps right by the third one i kind of was like i stopped counting to see if it was actually 16 steps i mean i didn't rewind it but it was i was counting because i wanted okay. it o to get over Whew. got it any more puzzles no I, like I always say no and then i bring one like <laughs> i know the listeners see it every time i'm, I'm on but I, I would I would probably say just with the, the time travel, it's not necessarily a puzzle about this, but it's more of a puzzle of like, if she does die, does she cease to exist in the next one? And if she changes the present, does it change the, the future? Or does it not, right? Because I mean, the future that's, technically has already happened, right? In this scenario. It's the whole back to the future concept. That's what they believe. But that only works if there's one timeline, right? Right. If, if there's multiple timelines, then yeah, she, she, her, where she came from, she's not there anymore. And if she dies, she, there, that timeline, there's no more of her. But- in another time, that's why I liked the ending so much, which we might get into popcorn redemption here, but I loved that she, her time got changed and she wasn't Jamie anymore. She was 
what was her name? Susan or something, but she was still in her yeah, family. Cla- Claire. Claire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Claire. Something like that. Claire. What's that's a fat girl's name? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> from, uh, from the breakfast club. Claire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great movie. Uh, should we jump into redemption? Any more Let's puzzles? Do it. Yeah. No, I think that's good. Okay. I have exercise the demons. I only have three redemptions. I love that they said casual beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just think that's I, I, funny. I think I might use it. <laughs> it's a casual. Can I have a casual beach? <laughs> yeah, I I'm gonna use it. Yeah. I just think it's hilarious. And talking about funny words, Dubasage is the sickest last name of all time, man. It's, That's pretty dope. Dubasage. It's so good. It's just, yeah. I love saying it's it. It's so good. Dubasage. Yeah. And my last redemption. I love the whole I mean, when you start to think about time travel, it just unravels itself because it's it's mind bending. But I love the idea of the guy killing his own dad and that made him not become the killer in the future. <laughs> it's just so fun- interesting to think about that whole loop. It's so funny to me. Yeah, that's a good arc. I like that arc. Yeah, like he just, because he killed his own dad, he he, he didn't become a killer anymore <laughs> because he saw himself kill his own dad. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> it like, it like freaked him out. Him right in the head. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, any That's any good. redemptions? Yeah, I think this is just a good, solid movie. Like what I really liked about it, it it, it wasn't as if it was like completely original, right? But no. they just they did it in a way that they didn't force today's fucked up culture on on us. Like they, they did just a little bit. Let the movie be it. They did a little bit. They would talk about like what's going on now and like make fun of it. Oh, because of. Yeah. Like the mascot and how she was like, oh, that's super racist. Yeah. Or like, we can't say that you shouldn't, you shouldn't say that. Or like, you know, there's certain things I liked how they did it better in this than we just reviewed old dads. And I think yeah. I think this was a better way of like poking fun at our weird society now, our over sensitive side society, and it was fun. As I think that's that's the point is is that they they did it not like they they shoved it in your face, but in a well, and I wouldn't even say shoved it. I th- I thought it was very subtle when, when they did it, and they just let the movie be about the horror, the comedy, and the eighty. So yeah. I, I thought that was great. And I, and I also like the fact that this is for the young adult, even old teenagers, all the way into a couple of middle-aged white guys enjoyed the movie, you yeah. know? So I, I think that that's also a great thing about this movie is that it plays for, for really everybody. Yeah. And I think I would have even enjoyed it more had I watched it with you or some other buddies that For sure. lived in the eighties, uh, I think it would be, I would have been made it more fun. Uh, especially like we read in, in the review, the reviews, how all these people are saying, you should watch this as a Halloween party. Like that would be a, a great time to put it on. Cause you wouldn't have to like pay attention too much and you can get the jokes. And I think that's great. For as unoriginal of a concept as it, as it is, they still, it still felt that it had some originality. Which yeah. I liked. So I think, I think it was very redeeming. I, like I, I always worry about today's movies and this one really kind of threw me back to, to the, to a 90s style movie. Yeah, I do. I mean, we've mentioned it. I think they kind of squandered it a little bit with some of the stuff that we already talked about, but I mean, overall, I, I would love I would love to give it a a, a large bucket because I there's so much that I liked about it, but I think I'm just gonna give it a medium bucket. Yeah, like I, I was thinking about this. I don't think that 
this ever was going to be in the large bucket discussion. I think that that I would give this a large bucket in the medium bucket discussion, if that makes sense. Wait, what? <laughs> we might have to so, go back into so puzzles. What I'm, say, <laughs> yeah, what I'm trying to say is, like, this was never even a choice for a large bucket. Yeah. Right? Like, like going into it, you knew. Watching it, you knew. Finishing it, you knew. Like, this was never even in consideration yeah for a large bucket but so therefore but i was just going to say i like that there are medium buckets there's it's it's like you know going to yeah, a, yeah. an amusement park and the churros aren't that great but when you're at the amusement park and you got a hot churro it's nice you know like it's like that's all I'm saying is you you know it's overpriced you you spend eight dollars but that churro tastes good because you're kind of tired and you've been walking around and you just want something sugary and this is like that it's like it's just po- it's just popcorn it's just fun and you said it much more eloquently that hey this was a medium bucket movie but damn for a for a, a B movie it sure brought it that game yeah. It was the best medium bucket you could find. Right. So it's it's a large medium bucket. Yes. And if you liked all those reasons that we said, you're gonna you're gonna like this. Yeah, you're not gonna come back to it every every season or every day or whatever. You're not gonna watch it six times like that guy <laughs> in the reviews, but it's fun. Yeah, right. It's great. It was good. It yeah. was a good time. And it was nice and short. It was, it was. agreed. Well, anything we missed. No, I think we did this one justice. All right. I just have to do this teaser, okay? And then we'll, I'll do my outro. Next week is my 200th episode. I'll give myself a Congratulations. Applause. Yeah. It's incredible. And I've kind of hinted at it before, but we are going to do uh, Goonies. I'm stating it right now. It is my most favorite movie of all time. And I thought it would be I, fitting to do it as the 200th episode. I think you're spot on with it. Congratulations on 200 too, man. Like I just, you know, I, I say this a lot on the podcast, but I just admire you so much for just the work dedication you put in and you do it for just the love of, of movies and the, the love of, you know, the, the, the friendships that, that you you've cultivated over many, many decades and, and just being able to leverage that. I just think it's incredible, man. So congratulations on 200. I appreciate it. And, uh, it, it is that it's, I love learning. I love being better. I love learning new skills. I love movies. I love my friends and all those things come together in this thing. And I'd love to make lots of money, but I, I don't yet. I've made some, but I, but that's not, that's not the sole goal. The sole goal is right. having a good time with my friends and watching movies. And that's it. It's great. I love being a part of it. So here's a teaser for Goonies. Sheriff, look. This time I'm telling you the truth. I'm locked inside the Fatelli's basement with this guy. <laughs> Rocky Road. <laughs> So get ready, get ready for a, it's a good, listen, if you like the Goonies at all, there's stuff in this pod coming up that I didn't know about. I did so much research. I watched so much content and there's some stuff that I guarantee you do not know about the Goonies. So join us next two, two weeks, it's two week uh, engagement for our 200th episode of The Goonies. Can't wait. That's it for this week, but I'm with you always. Look for me in the cloud at Popcorn Priest. I love movies and would love it if you'd share the love. Share this with the movie lover in your life. Another way to support the show is by giving me money. By visiting patreon.com forward slash popcorn priest and see what extra perks you can enjoy. If you made it this far, go. Go give us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I command thee. As always, thanks for listening. And thanks to my reoccurring guest, Mr. I can't see through this mask, Sakulich. 
<laughs> Much love, my man. <laughs> Remember, when you watch movies, you can pop off, pop in, or pop out, but always bring the popcorn. Popcorn.